Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Paweł Wieczorek. I work for uh, Samsung R&D Institute Poland, and I'm currently a member of uh, Tizen Release Engineering Team. Tizen is a GNU Linux distribution, and uh, in the um, common uh, variant, which I currently take care of, uh, its main aim is to provide support for as many um, development boards as possible. That includes uh, some popular ones like Raspberry Pis and some um, less frequently used like uh, Odroids, Artix, uh, and so on. Today, I would like uh, to share with you um, a, a short introduction to what Lava Laboratory is. Uh, since, as you might imagine, uh, tasks such as uh, validating, verifying, testing uh, operating systems on wide variety of development boards uh, involves a lot of uh, automation and uh, in order to stay efficient uh, we have to um, put as much uh, of our work on automated systems. I will start with a short introduction to what LAVA actually is, how you might benefit from it uh, and uh, what can it give you. Uh, then I will go through the steps of actually setting up your own Lava Laboratory. I would also like to share uh, a few useful tools that might uh, make your future work with uh, Lava much easier. And next, I will uh, show you um, how you can uh, get these results quickly. Uh, and also, I would like to share with you a um, few, um, uh, few steps uh, that you might uh, go from uh, having your first instance and what to do uh, with it, actually. I will conclude with a short summary, a few final thoughts, and, uh, of course, a Q&A session. So, let's start at, uh, with uh, what uh, LAVA actually is. Uh, LAVA stands for, uh, is an acronym which stands for Linear Automated Validation Architecture and uh, it's an automated system for uh, deploying operating systems on uh, embedded devices but also not only just on the physical devices but also on the virtual ones like uh, emulators or uh, VMs. That's why we uh, became interested in in it in the first place uh, to make the whole process of uh, deployment uh, kernel, uh, device tree blobs, uh, root FSs uh, on the embedded devices uh, with no uh, manual interaction. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, LAVA uh, lets us to uh, test on both uh, actual embedded devices and in the virtualized environment. Uh, and once the operating system is uh, put uh, onto the device, uh, a wide range of uh, tests can be run on each of the devices. And that includes uh, boot tests, even at the bootloader level, uh, or some higher level tests. Although uh, it uh, might be, uh, it's, it's worthy to, to note that some of the tests uh, might uh, require some additional hardware, uh, like the tests for uh, power consumption on the, or temperatures depending on the load, uh, of the load on the um, devices. Uh, and let's ask ourselves, when is it actually needed? In the most basic setup for embedded uh, development, like a single uh, ARMv7 uh, board like uh, BeagleBone Black. Uh, it's uh, not really hard to uh, memorize all the steps for uh, flashing the device, uh, communicating with it, uh, gathering results uh, from the test runs, uh, but it uh, has some downsides. Uh, for example, a uh, single developer can uh, use it uh, at, uh, at the time. Uh, it's uh, hard to share it without uh, um, actual physical presence and uh, and uh, passing it from one developer to another. Uh, 
and uh, it lacks uh, running tests in parallel. But that's not the uh, only problem with this setup. Uh, what about uh, if uh, your application or your um, embedded uh, GNU Linux distribution has to provide support for other uh, target devices, uh, even ARMv7 based like the uh, BBB? For example, uh, Arctic 10 uh, on the top left or Android Zoo 3 on the bottom right. And uh, uh, even with uh, all the um, procedures in place and uh, all of that known uh, by the developers, uh, maybe uh, your application or, or your distribution has to provide support for a completely new uh, development board like uh, MinoBoard Turbot, which is uh, Intel-based and uh, all of the uh, operations that I mentioned earlier are uh, done in a completely different way than the ARM-based devices. Mm. Even if all of these details are shared uh, among your team uh, and uh, it's no longer uh, an issue, uh, sooner or later, the test results will have to be provided uh, quicker. It will have to be done in parallel. Uh, and uh, it, uh, managing the whole board farm uh, of yours will require too much uh, effort from the developers. So uh, maybe you could benefit from an abstraction layer uh, put over uh, your whole board farm. That's actually what uh, Lava is. Uh, uh, Lava allows uh, to simplify even a complex uh, ways of managing uh, the devices. You don't have to worry about the specifics uh, of uh, each device, like uh, flashing, running, communicating, gathering uh, results. Uh, that's no longer a concern of yours. Uh, you don't have to worry about device-specific features as long as they were uh, previously defined in your uh, Lava configuration. And uh, you don't have to worry about uh, managing multiple instances of your device types as well. Uh, the scheduling and dispatching of the tasks is done uh, for you in the Lava environment. It provides a unified way of uh, communicating with devices from developers' point of view, uh, as long as all the, all the devices were uh, configured beforehand. Developers no longer uh, have to put an effort uh, into um, managing the devices. Uh, they look from their perspective equally uh, the same. Uh, with Lava, you also uh, get to uh, run all of your tests uh, in parallel uh, as long as they do not depend on each other and can be divided into smaller chunks. Mm. Also, it uh, stores and archives all of the results uh, that uh, you get over time so that you can mm, review them uh, or, or investigate more closely uh, if you need to uh, in the long run. Uh, also, you do not lose any of the benefits uh, that you get from the mm, mm, direct interaction with your board. Uh, you still get to uh, the device, you can get to device it directly by using either built in solution, which are hacking sessions or some um, external uh, tool like Board Overseer by Free Electrons. Uh, and since this tool uh, gives you so much, let's go through uh, who actually uses Lava currently. First of all, the team behind the tool itself, Linaro, uh, currently uses it for uh, testing both uh, Linux and Android on uh, development boards. Mm, also, the kernel CI project, uh, who uh, people uh, from kernel CI project who uh, test the support uh, of uh, many uh, development boards in the 
uh, kernel perform boot tests uh, within Lava Laboratories. As for the whole uh, distributions, uh, currently uh, both Debian and automotive grade Linux uh, do their uh, QA in Lava Laboratories. Uh, now that we have some uh, rough, uh, rough um, image of uh, how can we benefit from uh, Lava, let's uh, go through the st setup states, uh, steps. Uh, we will focus today on a standalone instance, uh, even though um, Lava allows you to um, get your environment distributed. Uh, what I mean is that it doesn't matter uh, whether the boards are in your European office or uh, Asian office or uh, any other um, country. Uh, it, uh, it, it will be still the same from the Lava point of view. We'll also focus on uh, the virtual devices only today and we will not uh, get into the uh, topic of writing tests for the uh, lava. And why is that? First of all, uh, to make uh, this, uh, f these uh, first steps as straightforward as possible. Uh, since it might be a completely new workflow for you, uh, it is really important to get familiar with all the basic concepts uh, so that it will not get uh, in your way and will uh, help you instead of uh, making things even more difficult. Uh, and uh, the, um, even though the tests that you might uh, already use uh, can be reused in Lava, uh, it might be um, um, wise to postpone the migration uh, after the whole setup is already done. Uh, so what, what are Lava's uh, requirements? Uh, fortunately, that's uh, lava is not too demanding. Uh, it uh, in in the setup that uh, we uh, go through today, uh, we'll need only a supported Debian release, uh, which uh, currently uh, includes even the uh, old stable Jesse. Uh, currently, the Ubuntu uh, support is uh, frozen due to uh, too old version of Django in default repositories. Uh, but if you are interested in the details of this, you might uh, find the um, proper uh, mailing list thread linked uh, on the slides on, uh, on, on the page of uh, this talk uh, on program.frostcon.de. Uh, Apart from the um, Debian-based uh, platform, we will need also uh, a few uh, additional files. Uh, first of all, uh, system image. Uh, it might be built all by yourselves or taken uh, from the pre-built images provided by Linaro on their main Lava instance on images.validation.linaro.org. Uh, for starters, it, it might be the quickest way to uh, get up to speed. Next. Yeah, sure. sure. Does, does Lava support building your own images within the framework, or do you have to build them outside and just supply? Uh, currently, uh, Lava needs to have these images uh, um, being al already built, so uh, some additional uh, setup would be required. Uh, for example, um, as you mentioned, uh, building them elsewhere and then supplying just to Lava. Thanks. Uh, next, you'll also have to, apart from the uh, operating system image, you'll have to uh, s uh, supply a health check uh, job just to make sure that uh, the board operates properly. Mm, and these can also be obtained directly from uh, Linaro 
on uh, git.linaro.org under uh, QA domain, you'll find uh, many exemplary uh, health check jobs for various uh, embedded devices. Uh, also, a device type template will be necessary, but those uh, are also supplied uh, by Linaro in all of the uh, Lava installations. There are multiple templates already in place, uh, and the one that we will need for QMU uh, is uh, mm, provided by default. The only uh, file that you'll have to prepare beforehand all by yourselves uh, is uh, this only uh, three-line uh, file, uh, which consists of the definition which uh, template will be extended, uh, and uh, two features that will be uh, specified uh, in order uh, to um, avoid any conflicts between uh, devices, so uh, the MAC address for uh, the KMO device, and uh, for maximizing utilization of your resources, uh, specifying the maximum memory of the device. Once you have uh, all of uh, this prepared, you might go uh, directly to setting up. Uh, thanks to the efforts from um, Lava packaging team, uh, Debian repositories uh, already provide uh, Lava meta packages that we will use today. But beforehand, uh, the database for the results, configuration, uh, and, uh, and so on has to be prepared. Uh, it's also uh, worth note that uh, just for today, uh, we will uh, use the um, meta package uh, for Lava, but as your laboratories get uh, more sophisticated and as your uh, requirements uh, grow, um, you might benefit from uh, the fine-grained uh, packages uh, to um, stay at the um, minimal possible uh, setup uh, of Lava and not to install any unnecessary uh, parts. Once uh, this is all in place, all you have to do to set up Web UI would be uh, to enable two additional modules for Apache and replacing the default configuration with the one that is uh, already supplied with uh, your Lava server. And of course, uh, restarting your uh, service in order to um, apply all the changes uh, on your server. Also, do remember to uh, set up the uh, super user for the whole configuration. As for actually adding uh, devices to your laboratory, uh, these three steps are uh, everything that you need. First of all, uh, adding the actual device type or letting the laboratory know what do you have in your laboratory. Uh, the first one has to be done only uh, once uh, per uh, each device type. Uh, the next ones uh, are uh, adding instance of your device and uh, actually specifying the details of your instance uh, or in Lava terms, uh, passing the device dictionary to your Lava laboratory. Uh, once this is done, you might go to the uh, CLI or Web UI, and uh, since it uh, allows you to automate everything, uh, I believe CLI will be the tool that you will use the most, but for just uh, quick and dirty tests, the Web UI um, should be sufficient. Uh, there are also um, a few other tools that you might benefit from uh, when you set up your own uh, Lava laboratory. First of all, uh, it uh, might be beneficial to have your environment reproducible. Uh, and from Lava point of view, it uh, doesn't really matter what uh, provider of configuration management you'll use. Uh, they all um, can perform equally well but uh, it is uh, 
uh, important to have your environment reproducible so that you will uh, always be sure that your staging production or any other uh, evaluation environment will always have the same uh, setup. So choose your personal favorite. Uh, in Tizen, we uh, use Ansible playbooks the most. Uh, Apart from that, I believe that your evaluation environment will probably be done uh, in uh, virtual machines. So depending on um, how much time um, do you have to spare, you might uh, either um, use the uh, quicker solution, which is uh, Vagrant uh, management software for virtual machines, uh, which allows you to bring up uh, VMs uh, almost instantly and provides a wide range of uh, pre-built boxes via its uh, Atlas uh, service. Uh, but do be careful, since not all of the basic boxes uh, are provided in every virtualization provider you might use. Uh, so take a closer look at uh, what you will be pulling from the Atlas service. Uh, if you have uh, some more time to spare, and like to um, tinker a little bit, uh, Libvirt will probably be the solution for you, uh, since it allows uh, uh, for the setup to be um, more adjusted to your needs, better adjusted to your needs, and still uh, comes with a few user-friendly uh, both uh, CLI and GUI tools. Mm, don't think that uh, all of uh, those steps that I uh, already mentioned, uh, that, that you will have to mm, run them all, of, uh, mm, all by yourselves. Uh, of course, it, it uh, might be uh, a good exercise to, to run them mm, once more. But uh, on the uh, page of this talk, you uh, will find an example of uh, virtual machine uh, configuration with uh, Lava installed from the meta package with uh, device, uh, with QMU device, basing on uh, Vagrant Libvirt uh, virtualization provider and provisioned with uh, Ansible playbook. So let me just, uh, oh, sorry, go real quick. Uh, what you'll find uh, in the tarball uh, is um, are actually basic requirements uh, for this evaluation environment uh, to use, which are currently only uh, pip and Ansible installed uh, on your host machine. Uh, everything else will be bring up, uh, will be brought up uh, for you uh, with uh, um, playbooks. Uh, from the tarball as well. Yeah, sure, of course. Uh, how about now? Is it better? All right. Uh, so let's stay with uh, this font size. Uh, as for the uh, configuration of your virtual machine, uh, you, if you decide to um, modify it, do remember to allow uh, the virtual machine uh, to nest uh, other virtual machines uh, within it, so that you will be able to add a QMA device uh, as the KVM machine. Uh, all the steps that I already uh, mentioned uh, are uh, written as, as Ansible roles, so the uh, database uh, introduction, the setup steps for uh, Lava uh, and, and others are already done for you so that you will get up to speed in no time. And uh, just to be sure, uh, I, uh, 
I will bring up the uh, virtual machine. Uh, I have to admit that uh, it is uh, uh, um, a little cheating. I, uh, I brought it up uh, just before this talk so that you won't have to wait for the download of all the packages. And uh, once we have uh, this configuration applied to our virtual machine with uh, Lava evaluation environment, we can go to the uh, first instance of your own Lava laboratory. And for example, uh, check out the devices that were uh, added and uh, in the initial state, just the single QMO device. Uh, which, uh, as you can see, uh, already performed uh, a few uh, health checks. So what is uh, inside such a test job? Uh, and it's uh, just the basic template. Uh, it uh, requires three main actions. The deployment instructions, uh, boot instructions and actual test run. Deployment instructions involve uh, what will be run on your device and how it will be mm, run. Now, as for boot, uh, it defines what to expect from uh, your operating systems uh, and uh, the actual tests uh, are uh, mm, described in uh, separate Git repositories uh, available directly f from Linaro. Now let's uh, get back to few final uh, notes uh, uh, what you might uh, do with your own level laboratories uh, from now uh, well uh, if you'd be interested in actually adding uh, some physical devices uh, the um, documentation on that can be found uh, on each of the uh, Lava Laboratories instances, but the most uh, recent documentation for that can be found in the main Lava instance on validation.linaro.org. Uh, the um, topic of, uh, of actually writing tests is described uh, in the um, chapter developing tests on the documentation site as well. Uh, you might also be interested in adding your laboratory to the kernel CI project if you'd like to contribute uh, some new boards or, or the ones that uh, are already available, but you would like to get the results on wider uh, range of uh, kernel trees. Mm. I, I believe that uh, everyone will benefit from uh, new boards in uh, kernel CI laboratories. As for the uh, articles that you might find uh, interesting, uh, Automotive uh, Great Linux uh, Distribution publishes uh, the whole setup of their laboratory uh, and uh, test framework used uh, in their QA uh, activities and uh, testing initiative from civil infra infrastructure platform uh, also provides uh, many uh, interesting materials on using laborat laboratories, uh, running tests on them, uh, and, uh, and uh, managing the results. If you'd be more interested uh, in um, watching a video or, or listening to it rather than uh, reading an article, you might be uh, interested in the um, talk from Bill Fletcher from last year's uh, Linaro Connect, which goes uh, into the detail on internals of Lava Laboratories and the design of it. 
uh, if you'd be interested uh, in the um, in in using uh, direct access uh, to um, to development boards connected to your level laboratories, uh, the talk from Antoine Tenard and Quentin Schultz from last year's uh, ELCE Embedded Linux Con Europe would be um, the one for you, or maybe you'd be interested in. Uh, uh, becoming familiar with the whole setup in the uh, Linux distribution, uh, then the Jan Simon Miller's talk would be the one for you. Of course, uh, much more uh, documentation is already uh, available, and uh, this talk just touches the tip of the iceberg, iceberg uh, of what Lava actually is. Uh, and uh, even though it uh, might uh, seem a little overwhelming at first, uh, all the common issues and uh, mm, some difficulties that you might encounter uh, will probably uh, be all solved uh, mm, if you look uh, into the documentation closely. Now, if you have some specific uh, issues, uh, also uh, Lava users mailing list or uh, linaro lava uh, IRC channel on Freenode will be probably the place you'll get uh, um, get your issues uh, resolved at no time. And to uh, sum it all up, uh, thanks to the efforts from Lava packaging team, uh, once you go through the uh, whole documentation of on uh, setting up your first level laboratory uh, and uh, pick uh, necessary um, instructions, uh, you will get uh, your first instance in uh, known time uh, if you uh, meet all of the requirements. Uh, it allows you to uh, unify the whole setup of your laboratory uh, and uh, you get the parallel execution of all your, of your uh, test cases uh, with no responsibilities on the developers. Developers uh, see the devices. Uh, mm, the devices seem to be uh, the same from the developer's point of view. Uh, and uh, even though the documentation for this project uh, might be a little intimidating at first, uh, the fact that you will uh, get all of the answers uh, from them uh, says it's the right way to go. Uh, also, mm, there is absolutely no need to uh, reinvent the uh, board farm management software if uh, the one that uh, Linaro provides uh, meets all of your requirements and uh, allows you to, to make your workflow uh, work more efficiently. And even though the, uh, the way of automating all of these actions uh, might seem a little costly at first, uh, it will uh, be beneficial in long run and with uh, each uh, new uh, uh, test run that you will uh, perform in your own Lava laboratories. And since you uh, already have uh, the um, starting points, you might uh, get up to speed in no time. Uh, that will be all of uh, what I've got prepared for you today. Uh, if you have uh, any questions, I will be more than happy to answer them. Okay. Uh, what's the minimum requirements for the set of interfaces for a board to be used by Lava? Uh, Is it, does it require Ethernet? Uh, the minimal requirement uh, is uh, depending on the way of uh, uh, your deployment, uh, of, of deploying your images. Uh, if you have uh, to perform only a test which uh, benchmark uh, possibilities of the board and you have uh, some specific uh, image, uh, only a serial console just to communicate with the device 
will be sufficient. But if you'd like to deploy different images, uh, that then some uh, other uh, transport layer would be uh, more efficient. Uh, so uh, some network connection uh, might be helpful, but uh, the absolute uh, minimum is just the serial console. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question, sorry. Uh, so I can just have a, have a board which just has serial and do everything with it, except it will be very slow. Uh, that's right. Okay, thank you. A question slightly more on the hardware side. Um, if you want to have the ability of testing bootstrap procedures within your farm, um, which might of course go wrong, a bootloader might not work, so the board doesn't come up. So one needs some mechanism uh, to replace a bootloader, which normally means taking out storage device, reflashing SD card or whatever. Um, do you have experience with a hardware solution that allows remotely deploying boot images? Unfortunately, no. The requirement for Lava is to have uh, uh, a way of communicating with the operating system with uh, the device already booted up. Okay. So, um, the other option than not booting from SD card would be to boot from NFS. Uh, is Does Lava have plugins or the capability to kind of place an image on a NFS share and then kind of boot it up and then switch it around? Uh, yes, there are multiple uh, mm, different uh, ways of uh, deploying images uh, onto the devices and uh, booting from uh, NFS is one of the uh, available ones. Uh, one of the recent changes, uh, mm, a pull request from AGL uh, allows to mm, boot the device uh, directly from NBDs, from network block devices if you'd be uh, interested uh, in um, such activity. Uh, what's the interface Lava uses to talk to tests? Uh, the interface uh, for, for communicating with uh, devices with or? The, with the tests, like when it runs the tests, how it communicates uh, the, the results, the uh, output of the test. Does, does, does the test have to be written in a specific language or does it, it use some protocol to communicate with Lava to report the results? Uh, the uh, tests are uh, written in the Lava compatible uh, YAML. Uh, Mm, configuration files which have to comply with uh, its uh, pipeline uh, schema. Uh, so the minimum requirement would be the three parts that uh, I mentioned earlier. So uh, the boot, uh, the deployment stage, boot stage, and uh, the um, actual test run. Uh, but uh, I can see that uh, that might not be the answer for your question. Could you rephrase, please? So, how do I make a test? Is it a separate executable, or is it a library for like for Ruby or something? What is a test? Uh, what the test for the Lava is? Uh, all right. So, um, uh, Lava deploys a shell script onto your device. So, if you can uh, write your test as this set of uh, um, steps uh, that would be run otherwise. Uh, manually by you through the uh, terminal on your device, then uh, you can also write it as uh, the um, Lava YAML uh, test uh, template. Okay, thank you. Uh, if uh, there are some other questions that you that come up, uh, feel free to uh, drop me a line at uh, my email address. Uh, thanks for your attention and uh, have a nice rest of your day. Thank you.